Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Meeting of the Minds. I'm Dave. And I'm Krista. So this episode is going to be mostly Krista's bag. Um, <laughs> to, you know, here's the thing. You pumpkin spice people, I know you exist out there. I'm not one of you. Um, but, you know, those spices are apparently super great for some people. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, tell them my, what we're doing and what spurred this. Uh, we are going to make a spiced pear mead. Uh, what spurred it was we went to a meadery up north in Arizona and they had a spiced pear mead. We tried it. I loved it. My mom loved it. He was meh. And so I said, I want to make one of our own for my mom and I, basically for my mom and I. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to be touching this stuff. <laughs> so a couple of things, a spiced mead, some methaglin. So if you want to get like super cute about the terms, there you go. It's a methaglin. Uh, we're going to be using a juice. So it's also going to be technically, I guess, a mallowmel or whatever. We're also going to be using fruit. So it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Thing, yeah. So if you want to get into, we can later. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. We got pear juice here. We have pears over there. We've got spices that won't go until secondary, yep. but we'll get into that in a minute. So we're going to be using a three gallon largemouth fermenter. And for this recipe, Krista wants to put in two pounds of honey. All right. So we're going to use some wildflower honey. Why are we using wildflower honey? Because other honeys will be too strong of a flavor. And so this is more of a not muted flavor. Oh, and technically what we're trying to shoot for is we're trying to really emphasize the flavor of the pears and the spices yeah. and all of that. And so orange blossom or mesquite or any of those other, like clover probably would have been okay. Um, but wildflower will give you a middle of the road flowery bouquet that won't overpower the flavors that we're actually, we are actually shooting for. Me. So again, we're gonna look for two pounds on this baby. Two pounds. And I bet Chris is going to want to mix this up and take a gravity reading. So well, look forward to that. <laughs> we got a big spoon, so don't worry about yes, it. Yes, we have a big spoon. And yes, I would like to see what the gravity is. Bingo. Mm. Right around two pounds. All right, so I'm going to get rid of our scale. Awesome. It's our perfect start. So, um... Basically, throw the ingredients in whatever way you see fit, right? We don't care. It doesn't matter to us or probably you unless you're going to be step feeding or whatever. So since this is Krista's bag, I'm going to let her do the, the thing. Every one of her projects, I let her do. Because number one, it's usually stuff that I don't really like. And, you know, it's a learning experience. And if I, you know, if the person who knows more is always telling the other person who wants to try something, it's a good or bad idea. Mm. So we're going to put in a gallon of pear juice um, into here. No, it's not that I don't like pear either. I love a good perry, ciders, perries, pineapple ciders, etc. Great stuff. It's the spices, right? It's the allspice, it's the star anise, it's the clove. Cinnamon's fine, but I don't know, guys. Yeah, we're going to put in, in secondary, I have... Um, some allspice, we'll have some nutmeg, some cinnamon. The, basically, like you think of Christmas or the holiday time, that's what's gonna taste like, hopefully. I think that's part of the issue here too, is like I'm from here in the Southwest and we don't have winter and I don't care about Christmas and all that <laughs> other stuff. And she's from back East and you guys are, you know, have to really embrace the cold because it's like Munchausen, it's there, you have to like yeah. love it. I have no, real memories of it getting cold enough to enjoy this stuff. And when it does happen, like hot apple cider and hot cocoa is a very finite window in Arizona. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm sure if I were forced into their company more often, if it were colder, if it were a cold drink right. area of the United States, maybe, but it just feels so like, bleh. So I have some black tea steeping. I, we have never, I don't think, tried putting black tea in a brew before, but I want to just try all the things in this. This is supposed to be great for tannins yeah. and things. 
The reason why you want black tea is for the thing that everybody, the except me, that doesn't, I don't care about it. That's right. The me to me is just like the honey and everything, and you get into like the sweetness and the sourness and the mouthfeel, and it becomes part of that hoity-toity culture that like I think mead doesn't necessarily want or need, but it's nice that you can do this. So I'm not against putting the tea in there. I'm not against doing the, the triangle of all the different things. It's just, it feels weird to me. So whatever. If you're one of those mead people who's like, oh, it has to have all the things. It's nice, but I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to have them. All right. So that was just some black tea and some water. Black steeped. tea and water. It was about a cup. Look for the tannins. Um, you know, as an experiment, we did and do have a mead in the back that is iced tea only. The water we used wasn't water at all. It was tea with lemon. So we'll see how that works out. You know, I'm not doing it for the tannins or the mouthfeel or any of that other like hoity-toity stuff. I just think it'll be a refreshing thing, right? And that's I think mead should be or should feel like, or again, my personal opinion, mead should be like a light beverage that I don't necessarily look for legs or tannins or any of that stuff. But this is a methaglin, which is a horse of a different color, which needs to have the spices and the legs and the tannins and the yada, yada, yada. All the things. Should we start? Uh, do you want to put your nutrients in stuff? Yes. So I've got a teaspoon of Fermax and a teaspoon of nutritional yeast in here. There you go. So I'm going to mix that up with this giant spoon here. Or paddle, I guess technically is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's kind of a paddle. And we'll get our gravity reading. So let me get our graduated cylinder all clean and ready. A few moments later. So while at the beginning, when you're stirring things, if you have to stir your honey up, or if you want to stir your honey up, I know David said, you know, we don't stir things very often. I just don't like to. He just doesn't like to. But it's okay to be a little vigorous with your stirring to get more oxygen in. Um, Possibly, maybe, citation maybe. needed. Sometimes we don't shake it at all, and it right. just stays flat just the happens. whole time. Because again, I, I like the the aspect that this is just occurring in nature, right? When it rains and there's a beehive out somewhere that gets a bunch of rain, you got a bunch of drunk bees because you got natural mead because wild yeast. Yeah. But if, you know, it becomes a project and I get, it's like, it, hmm. It's like finding a horse and riding it versus like building a car. Like the horse is there and it'll take time, right? You got to like make it like you and then you can ride it. But it's there in nature. It's like a horse. Whereas this feels like a Model A where it's like, okay, we mine metals and get fossil fuels. And it's like, sure, it'll do the same thing. But there are so many more parts and so many more things can break or go wrong because there's a lot of moving pieces. I just want to really get in here. Because really. the problem is if that honey ain't mixed, we'll be accurate. we're not going to get a great reading. Sloppy in there. Sloppy. Oh. All right. So we got our hydrometer, our turkey baster, and we'll see what this slop is. What I would love for it to be not totally dry. I would love for it to be like 1.010. At the end? Yeah. To be a little to end sweet without having to back sweeten it, but I don't know. We're using I'm. We'll talk about yeast, I guess. I decided to use Lalvin's D47 yeast because their yeast tolerance is up to 14 percent, even though alcohol tolerance or the alcohol tolerance is up to 14 percent. It can go higher, obviously, if they're super crazy, but. We'll see. All right, so we're looking at about a one point. I mean, if it's not 1.110, it's 1.999. It's so close. <laughs> so if I want it to be, they'd have to eat a, a, a hundred points. hundred points of sugar in there, which again, will get us right to where our 13 or 14%. Yeah. If I wanted, or if you wanted to load this up with a bunch of sugar, we could throw Classique or something like that in there squeeze it to 18, 
but who knows if the D47 will get to 14 or go right. past. So we'll find out. That's another thing that maybe you guys got some comments or insight about. Uh, what do you find easier or more pleasant or whatever the, the deciding factor may be? Because if you're like a lot of people and just want to get it all in one, you overfeed at the front sugar wise and just hope you have the sweetness you want at the end. Mm -hmm. Or there are people who bank on it going dry and stabilizing it somehow and back sweetening it. Maybe to preserve like the flavor of the honey so it doesn't have to go, but whatever. I, I want to know from you guys because we typically sweeten a little too much up front. Yeah. And only do we back sweeten when the yeast go absolutely insane and we just, it has to be done yeah. after the fact. Yeah. Uh, so, have we got all the ingredients in here? No, we don't. No. I'm also going to stick a couple of orange peels, orange zest, into it. And I don't know if I should put it in the bag or in just toss it in here. Uh, it's up to you. It's your thing. It's just how long it's going to be in there will depend on how much it extracts. But there's n we only have one peel of an orange in here, one zest of an yeah, orange. One there's no orange. pith. You want to get none of the white pith off of any citrus you use because yeah. it will cloud up your brew and it will stay cloudy for the rest of your natural life unless you do major changes to make it different. Um, I'm just going to put these in here so you can just Yeah, do maybe you we'll like. stick it in with the, with the pears. So the pears that I got, they're three large pears. They're called butterscotch pears. You got a hole in the bag. And there's a hole in the bag. But we uh, sliced these super thin on yeah. a mandolin and froze them for a couple of reasons. The freezing hopefully and ideally kills off any yeast or any other weird things mm -hmm. that could have been on or in them. Uh, but also the freezing process causes ice crystals to break up the cell wall to get all this juice out of here. Yeah. Which might be augmented by pectic enzyme if we decide to use that. So this is just three butterscotch pears. Yep, and they came in a pack of three. They were really big. It's probably, it's probably three pounds of pear. I'd imagine, if not more, it feels pretty heavy. So there's that. We can pour the rest of that juice in there. Now, the thing of the matter is, we've added the pears and the juice, that is going to increase the amount of sugars in our must. We're not gonna be able to read. I mean, obviously now we probably could swirl it around a little bit and get a little higher reading because of the juices that were escaping already. However, most of it is still gonna be locked away in the pears. How much right. is in there? I don't know, we didn't look it up and I don't care. It's negligible, technically, because you get three pears, is it going to raise it by 1%, half a percent? I'm not worried. We got a good starting gravity. The rest is pretty much gravy. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I could just add them all. They're not strong like a lemon, so. Yeah, it's your recipe, so, I mean, that's the thing. Don't say, they say, oh, I don't know if I should or not. If you don't know, go with your feeling, right? If you don't feel like you don't want to put that much in there, don't. I don't, I don't ever, like, go, oh, did I put too much? I go, uh, I'm going to put some more. Typically, or you put less. That's the thing. If you if you feel like you screwed it up, you won't know for a long, long time. <laughs> you might err on the side of using less of whatever you're using because of you know you're not familiar with it. Like cinnamon will over extract quickly. Yeah. I don't know about orange peel, but our lemon peel was fine, so yeah. it'll probably act about the same. Yeah, don't worry about right. it. <clears throat> and since we're going to be using only a gallon of juice, they got the pears. We're probably going to use about a half a pack of yeast. And again, it's the Lalvin D47. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Here's the way I like to do it because I'm kooky like that. Whenever I have this configuration, instead of like moving this and pouring it in and getting it all over the bag and everything, I just pour it directly onto the fruit because it's all going to get there anyway. Yeah, why not? And make its way down. Just make it easy on yourself. If that is easy on you, if you don't like it, don't do it, I guess. Bingo. Uh, now, did you add pectic enzyme and do you want to add pectic enzyme? I did not add pectic enzyme. I'm going to go with no right now. Maybe in secondary with, with when we add the spices, maybe we can add it. 
I mean, it's, that's the thing. Up front, it's good to get the fruit broken apart and the flavor is awesome because those apples were completely emulsified in the last batch that we used right. a lot of pectic enzyme on. However, because it makes a slurry that almost never separates beyond a few inches, you lose a lot. And I only have a gallon, so. That, and I'm not sure if these bags keep most or all or a lot of it. I mean, most of it, yes, it feels, but we just pulled one of these out that felt like it was all sludge. And if I had opened it and looked at it, it would just be water. Yeah. So maybe I didn't save myself any trouble at all. I don't know. I think we'll wait on the pectic enzyme because worst case scenario, we can pasteurize yeah, it, can, it. You can help uh, clear it later or yeah. whatever. If it, There's a million different ways to clear your brew and we've you know tried some. Probably not gonna do the weird stuff because it's weird. It's weird. So, got our top on, we're gonna throw this specially made bung. We're gonna fill a, an airlock with star sand. I'm gonna let that drip for a little bit. These um, fermenters are great for fruits because obviously they have a big mouth um, and a lot of them will come with that bag that hooks onto the top, which is also pretty cool, and the spigot. So we'll yeah. crack it. These come in a bunch of different configurations. This one's pretty much the blown out model because we've got the bag and the spigot and everything. And that helps um, with your yeast at the bottom or any fruit debris. It typically keeps most of that junk at the bottom. Is it the perfect system? No, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is since they are food grade PET, which is super strong, they get to cut corners by having it be like super thin. Mm. So when you move it, it flexes a lot and it can cause problems with your airlock. If you want to move it or take a reading or whatever, you'll, because you'll be used to glass or those thick plastic ones, you'll lift it up and it'll slurp a whole bunch of your sanitizer or whatever is in your airlock into your brew. So you just got to remember when you got something that flexes a lot, I always pop this out and let it sit because it'll happen to you. I guarantee it. You won't know, you won't think, and you'll start and you'll see it going. Hopefully you'll catch it before it does, does <laughs> but it'll do it, I swear to you. So let me get that seated. There you go. Now the pears are Still pretty cold. They came out of the freezer earlier and then the fridge most recently. Yeah. Um, so who knows when this is going to start? Probably within the next four to eight hours, given our track record, right. even with frozen stuff. Because again, it'll warm up and the yeast, most of them are still going to be okay with it and then they'll just grow with it. Um, but that's all we got, right? We got our juice. Yep, juice, oranges, nutrient, the tea. So next time we check in with this, we'll be adding our spices. Mm -hmm. Um, cause another thing you may or may not find is that some spices are antibacterial and antifungal, um, which is why they were using a lot of folk medicines and stuff. And a lot of people consider methaglins or spiced meads or spiced any alcohols to be elixirs of health and whatever. Mm -hmm. Cause technically, yeah, you've got the alcohol that'll kill stuff and the antibacterial antibiotic properties of your moral story is we're going to put them in secondary so they don't have, um, any ill effects on the yeast. Because again, that's a fungus. An antifungal, you don't want that. We're looking for a fungal infection, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll keep uh, up to date with you guys with this along the way and uh, see how it comes out in the end. And my hopes aren't high because it's a methaglin. I'm excited. All right, so it has been several days. Six days. Six days, bingo. So we've got our pears in there still. Uh, everything is sort of broken apart. As you can see, the gases have kept it up. Now, as this was um, fermenting, I kept sloshing it around to keep everything wet and keep the bubbler going and to keep this thing full of CO2 because I didn't want anything growing on that. And as usual, it worked like a charm. Mm -hmm. So we've probably got everything we're going to get out of it. The bubbler pretty much has stopped that airlock is there's a little bit of pressure, but we're pretty much just off gassing now. Yeah. And we've extracted probably everything we're gonna get. So our next step is we're gonna move this into this freshly sanitized carboy and uh, get the spices that Krista wants in her pear, what is this, a mead? Spice pear mead. Spice pear we're mead. We're gonna get a reading to see where it is. We're gonna taste it and see 
what it tastes like right now. It's going to be super young, but I want to know what the pears brought into this party and the orange peels. Zest. Yeah, and that, it, that, you probably see this. It's got quite a bit of heinous floaters in there. <laughs> so what? let's move it first. Yes. Then we'll go about doing all the stuff because uh, it's easier to get the liquid out of here and then worry about the cleanup of everything this. later. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to hand this over to Krista. Just going to put it down there. I've got a short length, probably too short a length of tubing for this drop, but you know, whatever it happens. Measure twice and cut once, but didn't even measure once. We're totally fine. It's hitting the bottom of this. So with the spigot, um, the nice thing is we can just stick the tube onto the spigot. He opens it up, and there it goes. A couple things to think about, though. And to not think about, but remember, I took out the bung with the airlock. Uh, you can also just take this off from the jump. Moral is you want the seal to be broken because if you stupidly throw a hose on there, open it up, it's going to slurp all of your S-Bend liquid directly into your brew. Don't do that. Make sure you pull it out first, pop that seal, make sure there is no vacuum, and then you're good to go. So let's do that. It's a pretty color and it's, you know, relatively clear. It's, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say. Well, I mean, I mean, coming into the carboy. I mean, compared to mud, perhaps. But it does smell better than I expected. Mm. Like, now remember, we haven't added the spices that's going to make it horrible for me. <laughs> it, it does smell pretty sweet and pretty fresh. The orange zest is coming through on the nose. It's, there's no weird young funk that some fruits give off. That's good. I think it smells pretty good. I mean, compared to how it looks, even, too, is a real stark indicator. So we're definitely going to have over a gallon, because those pears probably extracted a decent amount. Yeah, we should probably think about Don't stopping. Don't you worry. We're gonna, since we're in secondary, I'm going to take it all the way to the top, because you know how much we hate headroom in our brews. There you go. Mm. Bam! Look at that. And we'll be able to add spices too and then we'll be fine. Now if I get adventurous, maybe we'll do something with that and cold crash it. We'll see. It'll happen off camera. Don't worry about it. As you can see, there are some little floaty thingies. Yeah, the, the pear skin tends to break apart because it's not as tough as apple. Yeah. And we didn't use any pectic enzymes, so it would have been a lot worse probably had we done that. So let me get That's our... True graduated cylinder and we'll take a reading so on my card um i am going to write the date that we racked it which today is the 23rd of december and then i'll have my final gravity or our gravity reading of this one um see where it's at and then i have a, a side note to put what i'm putting in for secondary on here now we've got a bunch of herbs and spices to hopefully turn this from Something that smells pretty good and maybe even I would drink like on a summer afternoon to something oh. else. <laughs> well, let's get that reading underway, you know what I mean? So our initial gravity reading, we hit our target of 1.100. Yep, and I, again, used Lalvin G47 um, with this one, so we'll see what that did. Now, I had toyed with the idea of when we were racking this going through a brew bag to catch the rest of this but it'll fall we'll get it on the next yeah, rack I mean, I'm not super we're worried. gonna have to rack all this stuff out so yeah so you know a little extra essence of pear isn't gonna kill us let's see what we got uh, okay we probably got a little, oof, maybe a little sweetness in there. Get off my thumb. All right, so it stayed a little sweet. We're at uh, 1.004. All right. 
I wanted it, I ideally in my head would have been nice to have 1.010, but I mean. Well, we can always back sweeten, and this may mean that fermentation is not done, because we used 47, oh, that, that went above and beyond then. Yeah. So that's the thing. Let me do math. Alcohol by volume tolerance that they tell you is not always true, because that D47 should have put us between 13 and 14, and well, no, because 1.100, if our math is okay, that might be right on track. I'm just going to pour this back in because, again, it's probably going to be, I can still smell it degassing, so I'm not actually worried. What do we got? 12.96%. So about 13%. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I was thinking because, yeah, if 1.100 1, 1 goes dry, that's roughly 13%. So, yeah, we're right on target. I can't believe it. Uh, and maybe those point, those four points of sugar, rather, will stay. We'll know in our next reading, but I bet they're going to get eaten up. So, Krista, talk about what you were going to put in here and why. So, these are the, a lot of these are the, like, holiday spices. We've got whole cloves, we've got some nutmeg, ground allspice, star anise, which... I'm not a huge licorice person, so the amount going in here is going to be very minimal. Mm. And then a cinnamon. Yeah, typically you want allspice berries, but we could not find them literally anywhere. anywhere. Not it, the, No mom and pop shop to the biggest Costco we could find. No allspice berries, nope. so we got the ground stuff. So I'm going to stick, stick a cinnamon stick in, probably the littlest one, just because of all the other spices that we're getting in there. And cinnamon can put off very strong flavors if left in for a long time. Yeah, so even though it's not a great idea to like babysit and mess with, it might be a good idea to come back to this uh, in three to five days yeah. to give it a taste because these things are gonna extract sometimes super fast. And it's better to know than to not. I would risk possibly oxidizing a little over like having a wildly overpowering cinnamon flavor that you can't do anything about now yeah so i'm going to stick one cinnamon stick in plop okay whole cloves i'm only putting one they are very strong a lot of people put a lot of cloves in and i am not a huge clove person so i have a decent sized one it will definitely bring a flavor along with it. It's, they're strong and they smell really strong. Um, nutmeg. I did some research on, oh, this one's not even open. I did some research on spice mm, additions to meads. And a lot of places say a half of a teaspoon for allspice, like ground allspice, and also nutmeg. Um, but then again, it also said like five cloves, so. Yeah, that's the thing. You're gonna look at other people's recipes because they'll be great jumping off points for you because you can look at that and go, I would change this, 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 and this because not everything is gonna be good for everybody. So we are just looking at a rough idea of what should be in this recipe yeah. and going off of what we think is gonna be good. Cause again, this is the first time making this sort of methylene. Yeah, so I'm gonna put like, I don't know, not a half of a teaspoon, maybe like a quarter teaspoon. Yeah, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg in here and see where that takes us. Cause that also smells really strong. I mean, I guess technically you could have just put, you know, a heaping amount of pumpkin pie spice because it's basically all the same stuff in it, but. but the, that's the thing. It'll be up to you whether you want that ratio or not. Mm. This one smells really good. I might do a half a teaspoon in this of, all, of the allspice, roughly, about a little less than a half a teaspoon. All right, so now that's, oh no, we got the one last Star thing. And I yes. was gonna put a little bit of vanilla in. I was thinking about that too, saying we should maybe throw a little vanilla in here just in case. Yeah. Oh, like just in case of what, like how big is that thing? Oof. Smell it. 
Yowza, yeah, like. It's very strong. It's a strong licorice. Like the cloves are sh very strong pieces of clove. Like we bought this bag and we'll probably literally never use this entire thing. Know, Unless man. we know somebody who really likes licorice. That's up to you, you know, go with God because this ain't going to be my thing. Maybe, can we break it? Yeah, get that little nugget out of there and throw it in, I don't know. Never used star anise before because, you know, licorice ain't anybody's jam All who's right. under the age of 70. I'm taking the little... Little nut inside nut there? Nut inside out. Oh uh, yeah, with vanilla, I don't like to measure. We're because, splashing it, it's a splash. Yeah, you do whatever. You do what feels right at the yeah. time. So that's all the things. All right, so let me grab a uh, airlock here. And like David said, we'll have to come back in a few days to check it because we want to get this off of all these spices that are left. Yeah, so that's the thing. We'll watch it. It might change color. It might clear drastically because a lot of times when you put in very small particulate stuff, um, proteins will bind to it or it'll be just enough acid. Who knows? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll see what happens. But it'll be worth it to check it at least visually every day because... Yeah. If you see a rapid color change in like the first couple of hours, maybe that's when you should pop it open and give it a little sniff. <laughs> right. Because it has happened to us before. But you can see it's still degassing, so I'm not worried about what we did oxygenating it at all. Yeah, no. It'll have a nice, there's no headroom. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah, so the journey continues. So if, you know, that sugar is still available to the yeast in that there's not too much alcohol we'll see they'll probably chew through it if there is an availability we'll let these spices extract and check in in i don't know how long to see what we got but uh, we'll see when that is ready okay so it's been seven days sitting on these spices we're going to see how much has been extracted from this uh, we're going to do a couple of things at the same time. We're going to pull some out and do a gravity reading, mm -hmm. see if it's chewed through that last four points of sugar, which is dubious, um, and also give it a taste maybe, because uh, we're going to rack this into a pitcher, mm -hmm. possibly, or definitely actually, mm -hmm. to um, maybe back sweeten, so on and yeah, so forth. We have to taste it today. So yeah, let's see what's going on first with a gravity reading. Now, you know, as again, here we are. Stuff has been sanitized. Just thought like you guys should know. Okay. So we had two pounds. What's our uh, mm, ABV, really do we think? Did we write that down? No. Hmm. There's still a lot of like floating particulates and stuff in this from all the spices yeah. and whatnot. So I'm on the fence about racking it through a brew bag, which we do sometimes, just to sort of get all this sluice caught. But since it's still floating, I'm like, that's probably the better idea of just, instead of what letting it wait, because it's still floating and we're pretty late in the game. Yeah. That's probably because, part of it is probably because we used ground nutmeg and ground allspice because we couldn't find allspice berries. Now we're still at 1.004. Right. So yeah, it's as done as it's going to get. It's pretty clear aside from all the stuff that we've added. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll give this a taste. Let me grab our glasses. Okay, here are our glasses. We did a little math. We're looking at just under 13. Yeah, 12.96. All right, so hopefully I'm not going to get too many chunks poured into here. <laughs> Ugh, and this is a spice thing, which is not my bag, but it's yours. So. It smells so good. We'll see, people. It does smell like something you like. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It smells very spiced. Yeah, there's no funk, like there's no weird... Nope, and it's not, the smell isn't like all clove. I don't even smell the 
star anise. Mm -mm. I smell more just allspice. Yeah, there's a little cinnamon. Yeah, if you like spicy, not spicy, spiced. If you like methaglins, this is your bag. I would recommend trying this. Yeah, this came out, this is good. For, for what for, it is. For what it is. If you like methaglins, yeah. It, I don't like it. But yeah, it's a very good methaglin. I think that the pear and the all the spices, mm -hmm. I think just enough. There's no overpowering licorice. I don't think anything is out of balance here. No. Which is crazy because this is the first time I'm doing this. <laughs> I think it might need a little bit of sweetener, sweetening. Maybe. Maybe it's, a little. It's got the four points, but it's also still a little carbonated because it's still off-gassing just yeah. a tad every time it's agitated. So that might be adding a little fake sweet vibe to mm -hmm. it because it'll do that. So yeah, let's get it into the pitcher and, and decide if it actually does or doesn't because it, mm, it just might. It might. Okay, so now that it's in its pitcher, what we're going to do is going to be back sweetening it with the same wildflower honey that we use to ferment. Uh, now, again, we use the wildflower honey to preserve a lot of the pear and the spice flavor, and I think mm -hmm. it worked really well. You can definitely tell it was a wildflower honey. There's floral notes that don't belong to any spice, yeah. but... Um, Again, like if, if this were my thing, it really would be, I think it would benefit from some sweetness. And since we are adding fermentable sugar, uh, a la honey, back into it, we're going to have to pasteurize it, mm -hmm. which is our preferred method of stabilization. You can use potassium metabisulfite or potassium sorbate, or otherwise known as Camden tablets. Um, we just have a, an immersion circulator, yeah. and uh, it works super well, and... Yeah, got it as a gift, so whatever. Yeah. I'm so happy with how balanced the spices are. Yeah, for our first methaglin, I mean, technically, yeah. Yeah. That is our first one. I can't believe that. Yeah, it came out really well. Like, this was, again, something we've never tried, and this is something that tastes exactly like we had in a commercial meadery. Yeah. I think ours is a little better. I mean, we were flying blind. We were, you know, right, right. How many? How much spices? How many pears? I think it just sort of fell into our lap. Yeah. Or how much pear juice too? So we, used, this is a non-water mead. Yeah. Right, no water. Yeah, mead. this was a gallon of pear juice. So make sure all this honey gets mixed in, so we can get an accurate gravity reading. If this is to your liking, go for it. Okay. I'm going to have to finish this. Do you want some? I'm okay, actually. This is your thing, you know, yeah. Glad you enjoy it, but... Oh. The color is pretty. It's like, it, once it clears, clears, I think it'll be, if, if it clears totally. I think not. once we pasteurize, it'll clear. Uh, once we get all the yeast and all the particles in there, thoroughly cooked and they'll fall out of suspension, I think the way this tastes, we're not going to probably touch it until next fall. And by then, it'll probably be dynamite, but still, a dynamite version of something that I'm not. Mm, I think that's. That's good? Yeah, I think you should try it. I think. Oh. Just try it a little bit. I think that sweetness, that added honey, like. It's a winner for me. It is better. And I think you can taste the vanilla now, too, a little bit more. Yeah, you c it definitely, you know, that's what sweetness does. It brings out the hidden flavors. It definitely brought, I'm glad it brought the vanilla forward. It doesn't taste yeah. as, like, you know, pumpkin spicy. spicy. It's a little mellower now. Yeah. Yeah. Still not my bag, but no. boy, oh boy, if that is your thing, it is. It is good. I don't imagine our gravity went up too super high because we didn't put very much in. Yeah. We'll probably only put a few ounces. 
That's usually how it goes. We usually lean on the drier side of things, or at least I do. I could take it either way. I like sweet stuff, um, but I also like it dry as long as I can taste what's supposed to be sweet. Yeah, my recipes usually are simple, so there's not a lot of hidden flavors. I like Hidden Valley Ranches. <laughs> okay, so now we're at one point zero one two. Oh, yeah. So not bad. No. Point point zero zero eight points. <laughs> pour this back into our pitcher here for posterity. All right, so there we go. So the next step in this. Uh, is basically, well, this is the end of the video for you guys. What we're going to do is going to bottle this, pasteurize it, which you can see in other videos or we'll, you know, do again if you get curious. Um, but the next time we check in with this is after it's been bulk aged for a while mm -hmm. and we'll be ready to bottle and then do a tasting then and then check in on it over its lifespan, which yeah. we also have to do our traditional mead coming up too. Yep. Check in on that. So thanks for following us on this journey thus far. We'll see how far it'll take us in the future. So thanks for watching another episode of Meeting of the Minds. Bye.